there, welcome to my cooking class. It's Jacqueline McGrath here, and I thought I would honor Black History Month by doing a cooking class that maybe has a twist on Southern cooking. So I hope you're gonna uh, enjoy this class as much as I do. I'm just looking at myself going, oh my gosh, I must be cooking something with gluten-free flour. Uh, yeah, I am. Okay, so let's get started. Um, post below where you're chiming in from. Love to see you. I don't see anything popping up right now, but I know we've got some people already walking, uh, watching, sorry. Um, so today, in honor of the Black History Month and Afro-Americans, I'm gonna give you some fun food facts on this. Maybe more facts. Hey, Linda, nice to see you from Milwaukee. Um, so George Washington Carver, okay? I wanna, I wanna pay homage to him. George Washington Carver, are you ready for this? That Afro-American actually found 300 products that he made with peanuts. Hey, Cindy, nice to see you as well. Peanuts, 300. Okay, you probably know about um, Rosa Parks. She's the Montgomery bus boycott. Remember, she was the woman that wouldn't move to the back of the bus. And uh, yeah, so here we go, history on that. And Shirley Chisholm was the first Afro-American woman to be represented in the U.S. Congress. So I just want to make sure I'm honoring all my Afro-American people. And today's cooking class, we're going to do, as I mentioned, we're going to do a cooking class that sort of has a little twist of Southern. So, hey, Carolyn, nice to see you as well. So, in order for a uh, meal to be Southern, we have to use some products that maybe are in this Southern state. And so, I've got some green peppers and onions here, but they also love their sweets and they love cornmeal. So, when you saw me with cornmeal on my thing, now you know that we're gonna be making something with I don't know, maybe cornbread. So let's get this class started, okay? So um, as I mentioned, cooking something sweet. So we're gonna first start out by making our smoky barbecue. This is a sauce. This is a product that you could get in the summer. Hopefully you've got this. I believe it was actually part of our Epic box as well. So you may have one of these if you don't have it. Stay tuned, it's probably gonna be an item that comes back during the summer. <clears throat> hey Bernice, nice to see you as well. I'm getting a tickle in my throat. So what we're gonna do, we've got our multi-purpose pot and I wanna introduce this to you. You're gonna absolutely love this pot. Who has a multi-purpose pot already? Love it because it's triple weighted at the bottom. So aluminum's a really good conductor of heat and it's sandwiched in between stainless steel. So. Um, it works on an induction-friendly stove. It's got a pouring spout. It's got measuring graduations printed right inside. We've got a see-through lid. We've got a strainer built right in, not just a thick one, but a thin one as well. And uh, of course, a stay cool handle. I, it is multi-purpose. And I love it for sauces because of the pouring spout. So in our pot, we're just gonna follow the instructions. We're gonna combine our mix. All right, so we've got to cook this a little bit. We're going to grab our kitchen utensil. It's our spatula. We're going to put in some ketchup. This is going to be the sweetness. And for those of you who don't know, if your kids are begging to have ketchup at the table, there's a lot of hidden sugars <clears throat> in and ketchup. So um, if you were trying to cut out, and I know Linda, you're on here and you're trying to eat super, super healthy, you could change it to tomato paste. All right, so you can manage that a little bit more. Now I'm also gonna put applesauce. This is unsweetened applesauce, okay? So we're just going to put that in. This is of course our one cup prep bowl that I'm using. You can see how many times I'm using this. I love these. When you purchase these, of course, you get four of them, right? Next, we're gonna add a little bit of water and I'm gonna get my heat going. And we're just gonna let this cook for a little bit. Stir that up. There we go. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna put, oh no, we'll put it here. I was gonna say I should put it on the back burner there. But we're just going to let this sort of 
cook down a bit. I'm going to actually leave my saute um, or my spatula in here because um, we can. And I'm going to bring that to uh, your attention. We're getting really close to Valentine's Day. And how many of you have maybe uh, kitchen utensils that aren't maybe made of silicone? They might be made of plastic. And if you left this in a really hot pot, it might literally dissolve. I'm going to tell you, I had a friend who actually was making homemade turtles. So if you're thinking of doing something for Valentine's Day and making candy, uh, if you don't have good quality tools like we have at Epicure, you may find that if you stick something uh, plastic in something hot, you're going to be eating the plastic. So I do highly recommend if you're wanting to cook in the kitchen and take control of your health, maybe take a look at our kitchen utensil set. It is a higher priced item, but don't worry. Be a host, get that product free or discounted in our host program. And there's oh flippers, spatulas, saute spoons, the whole kit and caboodle. You'll love it. Okay, so we're just going to let this cook on its own. I think I'm just going to prop the lid a little bit just in case it decides to splatter at me when it, I'm not paying attention. And let's get on to our next part. Okay, so we are going to be doing meatloaf. I'm not going to be calling it classic meatloaf. Hey, Stephanie. Um, hey, Carolyn. Nice to see you as well. I'm not going to call it classic meatloaf because we are going to be super modifying this. All right. So you can use any kind of meat you want. As I said, it's gonna be splattering. Did you notice it's how quickly this heated up? But I will tell you, um, when you're cooking anything with tomatoes, and I did prop that, I've learned my lesson. You will find because of the viscosity of the tomatoes in here with the ketchup and the seasoning, it's quite thick. So rather than boiling, it's going to be like a, a cauldron and, and sort of pop and have bubbles. So um, good tip, the kitchen little kitchen hack, just prop it, okay? Learn my lesson and it saves having to clean your kitchen, okay? So we're gonna use our kitchen shears. Now, let's, what are some fun food facts about uh, meatloaf? Hmm. Well, it goes back to, I believe, 1775. And um, basically, um, it, it's around the world. You can get meatloaves around the world. In fact, Germans actually boil eggs and hide them inside the meatballs. Isn't that crazy? That's quite fun. Looking for my little whisk. Okay, we're going to put uh, an egg. Um, if you're Italian, you'll, you might call it polpitone, right? That's Italian for actually having a meat, a meatloaf. Um, Romans, of course, they love their wine, don't we all? And so they actually put wine-soaked bread uh, that, of course, keeps it moist. And some, um, if you look at some recipes for meatloaf, you'll notice that they actually put milk in their meatloaf because they'll put breadcrumbs and everything else. Of course, we really want to promote gluten-free, so you'll notice I don't have any breadcrumbs in here. This is a gluten-free meal, and it's going to be super easy for you to, to do. So I'm going to use my little, uh, actually, I'm going to get my saute spoon. Let's get this really going. And um, another thing that I want to put in here is I to make it that southern twist, I did grab that green pepper and the onion. So I'm going to be mixing that in too. So let's just get this going first. This is a saute spoon, part of that utensil set. I want to get this going. Now, how many of you have ever tried cooking in the microwave, meat in the microwave? Are some of you freaked out? I'm going to actually cook this in the microwave today. You can do it in either the oven or the microwave. So it just really depends on how much time you have. If you're a person who's busy and on the go, you're probably going to want to do the microwave. It's gonna taste delicious, you're gonna see it for yourself. I'm actually, I think I might even have a bite right in front of you, we'll see. Um, but some of you may want and have the time to do it in the oven, which takes about 35 to 40 minutes to cook a pound of meat. Okay, so I've got that sort of mixed up now. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my ceramic knife again here. I've just got an onion here. I want to just put some onion, uh, diced onion in. What you can do is I've actually cut it through here. So it's sort of diced it already. And then I'm just gonna do some quick little chops. Perfect, got that going. We can slide this right in. Flexible cutting board, gotta like it. And now I'm gonna grab my green pepper and do exactly the same. I just want like some color to it. It's also a great way to get some veggies in your diet, especially if you've got kids, you know, they don't like their veggies. But if you can sneak them in, and I actually think they'll just like the color. So we'll do some dicing here. All right, so what else can I tell you? Oh, back in medieval times, let's talk about how far back this goes because they didn't really call it meatloaf at the time, but in medieval times, people actually even put fruit and nuts in their uh, meatloaf. So really, truly, me modifying this to be a Southern meatloaf, um, I think you can pretty well get the message. You can pretty well do anything. Now, meatloaf at one time um, was called scrapple. Actually, in the southern states, it was called scrapple, and I'll tell you why. I should have probably started out with that. Scrapple means scraps of pork, right? So meatloaf down in the southern states was called scrapple. So if you're making this with ground pork, uh, maybe you want to just surprise the family and tell them you're having scrapple tonight and they might turn their nose up and start whining and complaining about it. But when they see it come to the table, they'll probably be eating it like crazy. So could have a little fun. Okay, so I've got my onions. I've got my pepper in here. I've got my seasoning. And this is perfectly seasoned. That package that I put in there, actually I should read the ingredients on here so you know what's up, what uh, flavor it has. We've got onion, we've got tomatoes, cornstarch, garlic, herbs, sea salt, smoked paprika, black pepper. Uh, we've got organic uh, cider vinegar and uh, cayenne pepper. So it's got a little bit of a kick, but no, not something that your family's gonna go, oh, too hot. So, all right, we've got this basically mixed up. Now, I'm gonna introduce you to our rectangular steamer. Okay, much like our multi-purpose steamer, but you'll notice the size is much smaller, okay? So, perfect size. I do not need to oil this at all. This amount will fit absolutely perfect in here. And we're gonna cook it in the microwave, shock of all shocks. I'm actually gonna pull it out. I've got a TV version in the microwave right now. It's almost done here. Because we've gotta put our sauce on here and I've gotta show you the um, cornbread. So we're just going to make sure we've got this evened out a bit. I like giving it a little plop on the counter, making sure everything's sort of even. And um, the directions, just so you know, I talked about timing. If you're doing it in the microwave, we're gonna put it um, covered and cook it for four minutes. Four minutes, yeah. Then we're gonna put the sauce on and cook it for another minute, a uh, couple minutes and until you make sure that the internal temperature is 160 degrees. Four minutes for meatloaf, guys. Or, as I mentioned, in the oven. This pan goes in the microwave or the oven. Hi, Laura. And the oven, um, you will cook it for 35 to 45 minutes. So, big difference. Four minutes, 35 to 45 minutes. You decide, okay? All right, my sauce, I'm just gonna turn this right down because it is piping hot. And I am going to put the lid on this and shove it in the microwave. Let me go grab the TV version. I'll be right back. A little toasty. Okay, so this is cooked meat in the microwave. And it's not like the microwaves that you had when you were a little kid. It is not. 
take a look at this. Can you see the steam pouring off here? So just, just for purposes, I'm gonna just flip it out here. This, I am gonna put it back in the container, but I wanted you to see, let me pour off some of this moisture, how it's perfectly cooked. Can you see that? So you can literally slice it. And the flavor right now, I can smell it. It, it tastes and smells absolutely delicious. Linda, you're asking if this was ground turkey. I actually use ground chicken today. I tend to like the ground chicken better personally myself, but that's totally up to you. Whatever's on sale, ground turkey, ground beef. Uh, if you're using uh, beef, try using the uh, extra lean just as a tip, okay? So you can see it is cooked. I, in fact, I'm gonna just cut it in half so you can see. Is it cooked all the way through? I would say so. And uh, it's gonna be absolutely fabulous. I don't need all this extra moisture. I did not oil the pan at all. So that is not necessary. As you saw, it pops right out. So now what I wanna do is I've got this sauce. I'm gonna just put it in the microwave for a couple minutes, just so it gets that Southern flavor. Here, it's got a spout. Why not pour some on? Now, if you want, because everyone likes this sweet sauce, you may want to actually slice all the pieces so that the sauce actually starts going in between all the little slices. Uh, however, if you're wanting to cut out a little bit of your sweetness you probably are just going to want to put it on the top and once this cools you can freeze it and keep it for later so put it in little ice cubes um containers once they're frozen pop them out store them in a freezer bag and you've got this for later so you're not having to wait so i'm just going to put this in the oven and we're going to make cornbread next okay one second i'll be right back all right so let's talk about cornbread oh my gosh when i was little how many of you are familiar with johnny cakes right you're familiar with johnny cakes um the native american it goes back to the native americans with maize you know where they used to grind corn and that was called shawnee and so where does johnny cake or cornbread come from anyway well, there's, there's, it's really a mixed bag of information that I found for you guys today. Um, they don't really know. Some say it was, they couldn't pronounce Shawnee. Well, I don't think it, I don't think the English settlers couldn't really say Shawnee, but maybe they couldn't, who knows? Um, and they, they use Johnny cake. So I'm, I don't know if I'm sold in that, okay? But, um, Others say, no, it was actually called journey cake. And somehow over the years, you know, when you start, you, you whisper in one person's ear and it goes around the room and by the time it comes back to you, it's a totally different story. So uh, I can maybe believe that one where it was because it's, it's uh, not like having a loaf of bread. It's way heavier and it's usually quite flat. It's like a, a pancake um, that maybe it was called journey cake and it just, somehow evolved into Johnny cake. That could be, right? It's possible. Um, also, another thing that uh, they call, if you don't want to call it Johnny cake or cornbread, you could call it hoe cake. And I'm like, oh my gosh, hoe cake. But it wasn't that kind of hoe, just for those of you who are laughing right now. No, hoe cake was, at, uh, there was a time when you when they didn't have cast iron pans and things like that. So they actually used um, garden hose, like garden hoes. So that's where hose came. They actually used their tools to make, uh, to, to create sort of a pan. So for this Johnny cake, I've got the mix, or cornbread as we call it. Um, we're using our cheese and jalapeno cornbread. And if you've never purchased this, it is delicious. You can make it two ways, just like our um, cake, or our, sorry, our meatloaf, uh, in the oven or in the microwave. So I've done both versions, but I'm just going to show you how easy it is to do. So we're just going to mix uh, milk and butter, a little bit of egg, 
We're going to grab a little spatula here. I think I've got them all almost all dirty. So. Anyway, we're just gonna mix this up. And we did we don't want to really over mix it. We want to make sure that, that we get our cornmeal moistened for sure. And so you don't have really big lumps. And then you're going to throw in some cheese. So this is low fat, low, low sodium cheese. Put a little bit in there and we're mixing it up. Now you can put it in that loaf pan that I had, you know, the one that's in there, but it's actually being used right now in the microwave to cook up my loaf. So we have these amazing little mini loaf pans. These are sold in sets of four. I love them. And how cute would that be to send your, your, in your lunch, right? Send the kids with half a one or a full one. This is good for tuna noodle casserole or chicken pot pies. And of course, for today's purposes, cornbread, you could do muffins in here, give them uh, as gifts. This I like doing in two of these loaf pans. So I'm just gonna split this in half. Thin that out. And I'm gonna pop this in the microwave, okay? But I'm gonna show you the TV version. One second, here we come back. Okay, so here is Johnny Cakes or cornbread. Done up, completed. Here's in the microwave. Now, the directions for the microwave said cover it, okay? So I actually, they, you get four of these. Remember I mentioned that? So I actually covered it, cooked it in the microwave, ready for this? Three minutes. Don't follow the instructions if you're using a little container like this. It only takes three minutes. Let me see. Okay, there is your Johnny cake or your cornbread. And it is so darn moist. It is delicious, okay? Now you might not have thought putting cornbread in the microwave would work. This is the oven baked. Actually, I'm just gonna set them out, okay? course you get the brownness out of it you get some crispiness with your um, cheese that was maybe on the top but honestly flavor wise there is no difference texture wise you're going to find your cornbread in the microwave of course more moist because of course the high heat in the oven is drying out your cornbread and because this is gluten free you may actually prefer it in the microwave okay so delicious I'm gonna get that meatloaf. Let me cut this one. Like it? Which one do you think you do? Do you think you do it in the microwave? Aesthetically, I think it looks prettier coming out of the oven, but moisturize, the microwaves got it 100% beat. Okay, so I'm gonna grab that meatloaf for you. I've got to get an oven mat here. I'll showcase you my roll-up rack if you don't have this. This is amazing, by the way. I like keeping it by my stove um, because it folds up to nothing. But this is steel and it's covered with silicone. So this is really nice to have right close to your uh, oven or by your stove like your Tibet. So I'm just going to grab this. Here you go, here is my Southern meatloaf. Oh my gosh, so hot, so delicious. And you can see that the sauce has thickened up. I actually, and just so you know, um, the directions for the sauce, actually it says on the recipe that you're supposed to add uh, a cup each of unsweetened applesauce and one cup of water. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I always cut back on the water just because with the meatloaf that I was having I didn't want 
it to have to cook so long with this cooking class, but you can modify things. So if you have any questions, make sure you reach out. Uh, Cindy, you're saying you have two, um, one in the house and one in your RV. I know the product is absolutely amazing. So guys, I hope that you're going to give this a try. That classic meatloaf, uh, by the way, can be done so many different ways. When you purchase these, you get them in sets of three, but it's such an easy meal for your family, as you can see. And I will plate this with my cornbread and I will post the pictures below on this video so you can actually see what it looks like. And I did say, and I'm only living with my husband, so I'm sure he's fine with me digging in. It doesn't matter if it looks that aesthetic for him. But I did say, uh, have you ever cooked meat in the microwave? And is it any good? Now this is piping hot, so hopefully I'm not gonna burn myself. But I said I would put a mouthful in. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my gosh, you guys, so delicious. I'm, I'm not kidding. If you've never microwaved ground chicken, microwave it. But make sure you use our steamers. Anyways, thank you for popping into today's cooking classes. If there's anything that you see on today's cooking class that you want to purchase, by all means, go to my website. If you're a savvy shopper, grab a date, do a virtual cooking class, pass around the link for your party and reap the benefits of being a host. And if you're thinking, you know, all I'm doing in the kitchen is making a meal for my family and getting paid to share it with friends and family, you can do this too. You could join the business. I would love to have you part of my business um, and support you with your success. So thank you very much for popping in. I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. Take care, everyone. Happy, uh, well, happy Thursday. And also, uh, let's pay homage to the Afro-Americans during Afro-American Month or Black, Black uh, Month, okay? Take care, guys. Bye for now. See you later.